Fiber cement was an Austrian invention. And it was really perfected into facades starting in the 1950s. Uh, through colored materials is an innovation from of our company, Etex, because uh, architects want to carve into fiber cement. They just don't want to hang it on the wall. They actually want to make it look different. So color through became a requirement and a and a request from the workshops we handed over with architects. So this material was really designed and perfected through a series of uh, annual workshops we conducted with uh, many architects. And uh, basically we created a wish list and the products that you will see today on buildings is the result of all of that effort. Uh, during the early 20th century, a lot of uh, innovations were taking place. Uh, before the turn of the 20th century, you started seeing sky rises, right? Uh, so uh, non-load bearing walls using steel structures and others and light co and concrete structures in France, it gave way to a lot of innovation and, and that led the way to to one of the materials we're discussing today, fiber cement. And Crayola, just to give you an example, was a product built in the US or designed in the US by a, a school teacher who wanted to give their students color. And this was in 1903, around the same period, fiber cement was born. Another um, very popular invention was uh, flight. The first flight uh, by the Wright brothers was in 1903, if I'm not mistaken. Then you have the Harley Davidson uh, in a, uh, uh, fellows got together as well during that same period. So this was quite an interesting, uh, exciting period for different industries and sectors. Uh, this gentleman is the um, founder of fiber cement. So invention is the uh, necessity is the mother of all inventions. These This family had uh, a network of uh, very successful uh, cardboard manufacturing plants. And due to the scarcity of wood and wood pulp, uh, they actually started investigating other uses of their infrastructure. And one of the uh, concepts that they played around with was introducing cement into the mix with, the, with, uh, with very little uh, fiber in it, which gave basically birth to the uh, first version of fiber cement panels. Uh, you can see an old picture. The factory on the right is actually the same location in Belgium, Eternit. Uh, obviously it's renovated, it's not the same looking at all, but we still have the same facilities on the river. Uh, on the left, you'll see an old train station, not very clear, but they were uh, loading actually fiber cement on the train that went out distributing fiber cement throughout Europe. So what is special? What, what I personally have a, a liking for this material and I, I like it because it's really um, respectful of the environment. Fiber cement today uh, relies a lot of on mineral inputs and a lot of the content in our uh, product is recyclable of recycled nature. And this will, this progress uh, will continue to uh, make way and hopefully in the next few years we will have a very high level of recycled content in our fiber cement panels. This, this is the, the mix, the special sauce that actually is poured into the manufacturing line which consists basically of water and, and minerals including cement and fibers, natural fibers, cellulose fibers. These machines are a hundred year old technology with obviously some improvements, as you can see, but basically it's the same concept. That's a hundred year old technology. It hasn't really changed. What we have changed though is the color through. So the pigmentation, we have changed also the mechanical performance. It's extremely for eight mm panels. We're very, very, very solid panels, mechanically speaking. So you can cut through the panels and you can, uh, put them on high rise buildings and they can withstand extremely high wind pressure. So this is really what's happened in a hundred years is, is you have mechanical performance and you have obviously some, some 
design and aesthetics that I will show, share with you later on. So these drums basically just roll the sheets before it used to be cardboard, now it's cement with fibers. Eternit comes from the term et eternal, as you probably may have guessed. So it is kind of an eternal material, believe it or not. The current testing we've done and the certifications we provide uh, basically give it a life, a useful life of at least 50 years. Uh, some famous applications in the middle of the last century were actually furniture. A lot of people were using fiber cement to design furniture. This is one of the famous designs that was popular back then. The uh, World Expo in Belgium, Eternit had a beautiful um, contraption, <laughs> for lack of a better word, but uh, a quite um, a big show at the uh, Universal Expo with fiber cement. Uh, just to talk about fiber cement and how actually we fix it to a building, just to give you a quick, quick overlay. Uh, then we'll follow that by a short video, a two minute video that gives you a little bit more detail. Basically we're creating a skin, a double skin on a building. And, and the main feature for you, the architects and designers is the ventilation. It's called a ventilated facade because we have to maintain the ventilation from below uh, throughout the structure. And that is the secret of the performance of the building. If we say a ventilated facade or an envelope or second skin is performing well on a building because it actually is procuring comfort from humidity and comfort from heat or cold. So these are, these are very important parameters a lot of architects forget when they're designing and we review that often and make the comments. Air has to enter from below and has to find its way out from the top, okay? So keep that in, in mind if you were to take away anything. This is one of the most important factors in your design. In summer, the ventilated rain screen has a cooling effect. When outside temperatures are high, most of the sun's rays are reflected away from the building. Heat that passes through the panel is partially dissipated by the ventilating effect in the cavity. An additional benefit in controlling temperature is that the structural movement of the building is minimized. Acoustic performance of the wall is increased when compared to other forms of construction. In conventional construction with internal insulation, the thermal shield has weak spots where the floor meets the wall. These are called thermal or cold bridges. This results in heat loss and can cause surface condensation, which can lead to mold growth. By having the insulation on the outer face of the wall, it can be easily mounted without interruptions. Therefore, any thermal bridges are eliminated. The rain screen system is very efficient in controlling condensation. Any risk of interstitial condensation occurs in the ventilated cavity. The breathable structure allows water vapor to pass through the construction from the inside into the ventilated cavity. All of this results in a greater degree of comfort for the occupants. Cladding is allowed to leak. Any water that may penetrate the joints and enter the cavity behind the cladding is quickly evaporated through the natural ventilation in the cavity or by draining down the back of the panels and out at the base of the wall. In driving rain conditions, the moisture forms a membrane across the joints, which keeps most rainwater on the outside of the panel. Scientific testing carried out by FBHF from Germany has shown that the amount of driving rain that ever reaches the face of the insulation is minimal. The ventilated rain screen has lightweight, strong, durable, excellent resistance to fire, frost-proof, resistance to fungi and insects, minimal maintenance, and is also aesthetically pleasing. Uh, 
some of the early uses of ventilated facade in heights began in the 60s uh, with this gentleman who pioneered using our boards. Back then it wasn't equitone, it wasn't color through, we didn't have textures, but it was basically the same material. Then we had this genius uh, also in, in the 50s that decided to play with some of these multi-story buildings. What he actually did was painted the inside walls of the uh, fiber cement. Today, obviously, we have the some of the color and color through in our panels options for architects who are looking for color. Uh, th this building actually still stands today in Marseille, so you can admire it if you ever visit Marseille. Other creative architects using lightweight fiber cement, uh, such as this example here in Mulhouse in 86. It's uh, a, uh, an industrial building with an interleaving um, range of panels, allowing for different um, uh, interaction with lighting and in, in the building. So a quite comfortable building, I suppose when you have the option to protect from heavy rain and you also have some of the lights penetrating the building. A uh, reminder that fiber cement is mineral. One of the biggest challenges for us was to create a product for architects that they would love working with. So we have to work with textures and that's really the secret. We came up with textures and this was a design effort, collaboration effort with architects, uh, as I mentioned earlier. A quick recap, not to get too technical, but just to show you that all the testing exists and, and obviously is, is there in case you ever have any doubts. But one thing I highlighted in gray is the weight per square meter, 15 kgs. This is extremely lightweight. So you can imagine the savings on high rises and and other um, uh, building structures. You can also imagine the different uses you can have for this material from suspension ceilings, et cetera. So very, very nice for installers and installation companies to work with. It's very comfortable and they really love working with our materials because it, it, it makes their life a lot easier in the, in, the, in the field, in the job site. So obviously all the uh, American and, and European standards are are there and tests are available in case anyone wishes to have any, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be happy to share. You can see some of this texture. This is probably the most famous uh, material that has been designed with architects. Um, basically you can cut our materials. We don't call them products, we cut them materials. So you can cut materials, you can fashion them in a lot of different ways, which we will share with you shortly. And that, that's design flexibility for the architects. And honestly speaking, cost-wise, this is extremely commercially priced. And uh, we, we made a huge effort with architects while we were designing Equitone to make sure that actually it's affordable. It's affordable for a small home homeowner it's affordable for a public building, for a academic building, for a health facility, and commercial and retail. So this is really a big advantage we brought to the market in the last six, seven years, is a very fine material that is very appealing to architects, but is extremely commercially priced. As you can see, uh, that whole facade is is using um, that material we just showed with that texture. This is a beautiful museum in Hong Kong, just recently finished. This is a residential building with an overlaying uh, wood structure. So you have basically two facades and you can call them ventilated. The principal one is the darker element. The decorative element is the secondary uh, polygonal element. This is a project that was completed recently in uh, Dubai, in Business Bay. So this actually has um, two different materials. You can see 
um, the gray elements on the side and the balcony level. And then you can see also a wood finish from another material that is quite uh, popular between architects now in the Middle East that they like to convey the natural uh, wood panels uh, from another vendor as well as marry them with the mineral materials, the, the stone-like materials, cement-like materials from our, from our factory, Equitor. This is uh, quite a unique uh, building that was uh, showcased during the design week last year in Mexico and it won an award and it's a really great ap uh, uh, application of flexibility in design. You can see the inside circle, uh, circular um, cutouts. Those are also equitone. So uh, quite, quite in intriguing uh, concept by this architect. And uh, the be beautiful building, uh, indeed. What is special about fiber cement that uh, differentiates it for architects, I think, from other materials that are kind of getting old uh, metallic um, HPL is that it's authentic. You can really see the fibers. You can really see it's alive. Uh, it changes color with in contact with rain, and then it dries when you cut it out. You can see there's a lot. It's a living material almost. That's the term I keep hearing from people. And I started selling this in Morocco a few years ago, and I get the same reaction from architects. It's not boring if you install it properly. It really gives life to the building. So what can you do? You can do all kinds of layouts, geometries. These are some of the early designs. This was back in 2009 in Belgium. This is a campus in the US, Rhode Island. Uh, big, we have two board sizes, so you, you, can, you can play with two board sizes. And what's important is we reduce wastages. So value engineering is good when you're doing um, uh, big panels and you have two board sizes to pick from. It's another facade with different materials, brick inclusive, quite nice. Uh, this is one of the family members of Equiton that's actually quite noticed by architects. Um, this is the upper upper level um, echelon in the family. Uh, it's 10 mm. This was one of the designs we did um, to promote the material back in 2014, the nature of things, done by a famous artist for us see the reflection and basically we're playing with light from the wall with uh, with the sun and you can see the same message sent written out by the shadow it's a project a small building in in london with linea this material is called linea and what's unique special the design actually was inspired by the dimensions of the human hand and um, basically you can, you can see the, the symmetry and the spacing between the lines. Uh, it really is appealing. And I think that's a lot of architects subconsciously find the dimensions really harmonic and proportionate to nature, which is basically the shape and, and the size of the human hand. This is another finish called Materia. And um, I like to refer to this like a paper surface finish, like a papyrus. Very, um, it's you can you can basically touch almost touch the fibers with your eyes. This is one of the most iconic buildings that uh, we had done in Austria for an opera house. So you can see the shapes, the cutouts, the angle. It's quite, um, quite iconic building for us today, thanks to the work that was done by the architects. 
All of these panel shapes were cut out from standard rectangular shapes of 305 by 122 or 250 by 122. This was the original building before it was renovated. And the discussion was when it snows in this valley, you will no longer see the opera house. So that's why we have this design today. Now you can see the snow and the darker fiber cement. This is a pure white material we have as well that appeals uh, to architects and we're finding a lot of demand for very light materials in our warmer climate zones in the Middle East and the Mediterranean basin as well. Same elements light and gray fiber cement panels with some applications under the ceiling as well. Same architect designing the same look and feel. You pay attention, the joints are usually open. You can keep open joints for most of these projects, uh, very rarely do, do architects want to seal the joints. You can also see the under ceiling um, under the windows is also in fiber cement. This is also an iconic building using brise concepts for protecting the building and giving some shade. So easily installed on very light metal or aluminum substructures. This is a project in the US. It's an aquatic center and a university campus. And you can see the, um, the window trim as well as the facade, creating quite a, a unique feeling in the facade as if it's imitating, you know, the, the, the flutter, the flutter of, of, a, of a tree leaf on a, on a tree. So I find it quite unique how they've made the design integrate with the environment as those trees will probably grow older, you'll see a lot of interesting uh, visual correspondence between the, fa the facade and the, uh, the trees. I find that rem reminiscent of that natural event. Close up just to give you an, an this is from Gensler. This is one of the early projects done for Equitone as a perforated panel for a shopping center in New Zealand, Auckland as well. So you can see that you can do uh, shutters and kind of um, large panels and, and mix it with a, a aluminum substructure. Some more nice detail on fabricating shutters using fiber cement. This was an inspirational um, piece by a Spanish architect at an exposition in Berlin. So you can basically do some extreme, extreme carving and perforations in Equitone. So you can let your imagination run wild if you have some geometry and some parametric design desires to give your building a, a unique touch or identity or brand. This is a renovation of an old building. 
in Köln in Germany. You can see the top section of the building. This was a concert hall, so imitating the piano, the keyboard. And this is a simple application of a curved surface for a museum in Sydney, the Taronga Museum. This is a renovation of an old brick building in Belgium. On the side, you can see the balconies, covered enclosed balconies with uh, equiton, as well as the roof terrace. This is in the UK Leeds with some color sections as well of the building. This is a example of how much color you can really get if you really wish to have color in, in Equitone. You, you have uh, a lot of Australian architects um, using Equitone for some other colorful buildings, such as this one. This is a iconic building, the flower market in the Netherlands. This is a white, pure white, uh, smooth finish interior and exterior of the building. You can see the wave, the wavy uh, roof over the glass uh, structure there on the left is also using Equitone. That building was uh, a really interesting design. They had a modular off-site prefabrication done. So Equitone was installed um, off-site and then the modules were installed on the job site. This is an example recently of another um, innovative approach to modular building in uh, New York. And Equitone was also involved in the process and everything was mounted offsite in an industrial fashion. Another example of perforations to give, it, give identity to the building. Won an award in 2009. This was a technology university and this building, I believe, was the tech, uh, engineering wing, uh, computer science wing, so. This, this um, slide, just to remind you that fiber cement is also quite um, adaptable to interior use. The um, Applications vary from acoustic panels to partition walls, ceiling and floors. Obviously, fire protection is very important and critical. The panels are really, really fire resistant, have a high fire resistance rating. Uh, and so quite a lot of the textures, we have some smooth textures, rough textures. So you have full gamut of choice, depending on your design and the mood you want to create in your building. Your under ceiling there is all covered in, in Equitone. This is also a beautiful building using different materials. I can see they're corrugated metal, wood, glass, and fiber cement, at least four materials. A little bit of color and, and cutouts, this public library in Australia. You can see the rough concrete, then you see the fiber cement panels 
on the side of on the wall, as well as the roof under roof structure. So it's kind of interlaced in all sides of the building. I must be allowed to enter at the base, travel unobstructed up the wall, and exit at the top of the building. Must be allowed to enter at the base, travel unobstructed up the wall, and exit at the top of the building. Securely fix the wall brackets with their thermostops to the wall with suitable screws or bolts. Fix the insulation against the wall. Using the clip on the wall bracket, insert the vertical T profiles behind the vertical panel joints and the L profiles as the panel's middle support. When final positioning is confirmed, fix the profiles. The wall brackets are arranged with fixed and gliding points. Each length of vertical profile has one fixed point wall bracket. This is positioned either near the top or in the middle of the vertical profile. The fixed point wall bracket, which carries the weight of the cladding, is normally the larger of the two. The rivet or screw is placed in the holes of the bracket to lock the profile in place. Make sure the fixed points are kept at the same level around the building. The other wall brackets, which are smaller, are the gliding points. The rivet or screw in these is inserted into the elongated holes. This hold the profiles in place while still allowing them to move freely up and down to accommodate the thermal expansion of the aluminium. It is important to always leave a 20 millimeter gap between the ends of the vertical profiles. This must coincide with a horizontal joint between the panels. Um, fixing systems for aesthetic purposes for our boards, we had to give architects the two choices most often requested, which is uh, visible fixing with a rivet that is actually uh, matching the color of the board, as you can see in this image. So there are a lot of applications for a visible fixation. One of the advantages obviously is cost. There's about 25 to 30 percent, uh, you know, economy of scale when you go from a visible fixing system to a hanging or mechanical fixing system, which we'll show you in the next screen. And most of the architects who struggle with value engineering with, with their clients what we usually say is clients who insist or want to have the look or architects the look and feel of a hanging system, we usually ask them to imagine the first floor or two with the hanging system that is more expensive. But then because the rivets are so small and the panels is to just complete the building for the upper levels in using the visible system. So that gives them quite a bit of, of savings, cost savings as well. Aesthetically, not, not, no big changes because the naked eye cannot really see the rivets on the second or third floor. So this is just a simple example where you would have a hanging system and then you can see on the right the rail, the rail that would, would be supporting those panels. So nothing you know, out of this world. It's really, uh, we haven't really reinvented the wheel when it comes to fixing systems. The same fixing systems used in ACL and HPL. The only thing we have actually worked on a lot is the rivets for the fixing system. These rivets, we've designed them with some protective sleeves so that when you have movement and very high winds, it doesn't actually create any damage to the panels. That is a unique feature that we have put into our design for the riveting system. And uh, we, we usually bring that to the attention of um, contractors who are trying to overvalue engineer stuff and clients to say, be careful if you get 
panels in very high rise situations with high winds, if you don't have a good riveting system, you will definitely have cracking and risks of breakage. This slide was created by a colleague of ours to open up the topic of recycling, recyclable content, reuse, use and reuse. And um, one of the, um, you know, one of the focus for us of sustainable responsibility starts really at the factory where, as you, if you recall that drum wheel cutting off the panels, the wet panels from the production line. A lot of those um, uh, panels, they, the cutoff process is not perfect as you can imagine. So we always have uh, a stream of waste that is actually recycled immediately in the plant. So our, our you know, ability to recycle and treat the materials at the plant gives us a really, really nice story in terms of uh, reducing waste. The second source of, um, of sustainability and responsibility in terms of our philosophy with the circular economy and uh, being able to support designers who are looking to certify buildings and, and giving, giving our materials a high rating when it comes to that process is the fact that we, we are constantly searching and have a high reuse content for fibers in our, in our uh, input at the factory level. So that's number two. Number three is the life's end of the panels. Since they are mineral materials, they easily can be recycled back into a, a construction uh, uh, site. So different uses uh, definitely can be found for equitone and fiber cement at the life end of its life cycle as well, because it is a mineral product. So we don't have resins, we don't have glues, we don't have other um, um, complex compounds that make it difficult in some cases to recycle materials at the end of life cycle. Uh, obviously for architects, you would require environmental responsibility. You would it, it require us to provide you with product declarations, EPDs. So we do spend a lot of effort and updating these documents um, and our materials are all tested and we do spend quite a bit of effort and resources to make sure that we can satisfy the requirements of the demand, you know, the and demanding uh, clients and consultants and engineers. This is a simple example of a LEED certificate certified building in the US, Beverly Hills. This was done a few years ago. And obviously the ventilated facade um, contributed to the energy efficiency of the building. So by cooling the building and protecting it from the heat in, in Los Angeles, definitely added some points to the certification process. And having a material with a somewhat of a lower carbon footprint, I suppose, may have also assisted in aid in that effort. A quick summary of the concepts, topics we went through, as you can see from your screen. So we know a little bit about the exciting history of fiber cement from cardboard to fiber cement heritage. We learned about the innovation of color through materials in the last decade, working with architects like yourselves and how these materials perform with their textures and how they offer versatility on a facade. We also have seen the many different design possibilities of through colored fiber cement, both for ventilated applications, indoor and outdoor, internal, external applications as well. We have also seen a couple of videos, short videos that were quite self-explanatory on how you can fix the materials on buildings and how the, the cladding actually functions when it's exposed to weather. And uh, thank you for 
your time. Please feel free to uh, join in on the Q&A. And if you have any questions, we'll hand it over to the moderator. All right. Thank you, Khalil, um, for the presentation. Uh, we have a few questions here. Um, question from uh, Nagam Al Qaisi. Just wondering if this material has been tested for hot and arid climates. Uh, yes, certainly this has been tested. What the main testing, since it's a mineral product, you can imagine that uh, m minerals are naturally, have naturally evolved their stabilized materials. So heat and cold don't really affect them that, that much. It takes thousands of years for a mineral product to degrade. However, the, the main effort we've had to undertake is color. When you have a color pigment in a very, very hot climate, you do have to pay attention to fading. So we, we do extensive uh, testing in lab with some sophisticated equipment. And we also do extensive testing in desert climates, both in, in the US. We have some labs that test our materials in Arizona and Florida. So we test high humidity, high sun UV index, and we test dry and high UV. And then we have uh, certificates that we can provide architects that and, and engineers that basically reassure them that if we say this material will last 20 or 30 years, then basically they're, they're reassured. Okay, um, the second question here um, is from Alvik. If one uses fiber cement for fire rated walls in, in the interior, uh, what are the fire blocking sealing strategies that are available or maybe perhaps that you are utilizing? Well, the uh, fiber cement panel itself is an A1 rated D0, um, DS0 uh, material. So you have high level of um, uh, fire insulation and protection just in the material itself. Um, there is no requirement to really add any other sub uh, structure or material between the wall and the panel. So if you ever have a design in mind, uh, or if you provide your email, I, I'll be happy to share with you some of the uh, cross sections and documents if you can, in case you're interested. I, I will make sure I send a link as well with some of these technical documents for all to download and, and review at your own leisure. Um, I think what we can do, um, if you can type up your email and um, the website where they can get the technical sheets in the chat box, so it's easier for them to easily just copy paste it and keep it on their records. Um, that would be helpful, I think. Um, another question from uh, Fatma. In severe air pollution, how does the material weather? Good question. We've had a lot of architects change materials from aluminum, aluca bond, and other materials, uh, ACLs, to uh, fiber cement because um, they um, they age very well. I've seen buildings in Dubai, ten-year-old buildings. You can probably pay pay a visit and yourself and see how they've aged. But in really heavily polluted uh, um, markets, uh, we've seen quite a fantastic aging resistance. Uh, to, to pollutants in the air. And that's because of it's a mineral material. And so, yes, that's a, one of the advantages I sell actually when I'm talking to people in polluted cities, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Khalil, yeah. seems like your, your, your video is not on. So if you want to show yourself to the participants. Okay. Yes, that's Khalil. <laughs> okay. Um, another question is, uh, can you please expand and elaborate on how it works with modular construction and prefabrication, the actual pro the process? So let me just provide a generic answer because that's a, that's a specific um, and it's a case-by-case -case answer. But what, what 
Here are the two advantages why you've seen two examples of modular buildings using fiber cement and equitone in particular, because one, it's very resistant and lightweight. So which means uh, if you were to build offsite, you can manipulate the materials very easily and very minimal increment in, in logistics and transportation costs, et cetera. So uh, modular design for equitone, offsite is fantastic. On-site, if you have modular design and you need to do last minute finishes, it's also fantastic because it's very quick and easy to install. So let's say you're doing a renovation as well which I didn't mention, some of the buildings we had shown, they were renovations. One of the nice things about renovations is with Equitone is you can do very quick, fast renovations and improve the efficiency, energy efficiency of buildings by creating an envelope. So in the Middle East, I visited, you know, a lot of the cities and capitals in the Middle East. I can see a lot of old ACL on buildings. Energy efficiency is very low on those buildings. If you were to redesign them using envelopes with materials like uh, fiber cement, you would get a huge reduction in, in, in a huge increase in comfort. All right, so one, uh, actually two people asked this question. Uh, what is the cost per square meter? Uh, comparable to quality first grade ACL installed costs. So we are selling projects anywhere from 125 to 150 US dollars per square meter, all inclusive. That means supply and install. 150 being hanging system, 120, 125 being visible system. This is what our distributor and partner in Dubai, Obras, is, is doing right now. And if you look at similar materials of um, equal life, but perhaps don't age and perform as well in time, like quality premium ACLs, they are actually selling for higher than our materials. So. Okay. Um, how is how is the weatherproofing, if required, done on the material? Uh, there is no weatherproofing done on the material. It is actually a self, uh, it's water repellent uh, when it leaves the factory. And the surface does have a little bit of absorption of humidity, but it dries off quite, quite uh, easily. So it really very, very little humidity can be observed when it's raining or extremely humid conditions in some of the markets, but it evaporates in the course of the daytime. So there isn't really any treatment that needs to be done for waterproofing at all. Um, I've seen, I've seen fiber cement suppliers uh, not warranty exposed edges. Is it standard regulation among manufacturers? Um, our materials, when they're cut, color through and cut and installed, we give warranty on, a, on the whole panel. So I'm not sure what the, the participant is referring to, but um, mo all of our panels are, uh, warranties go with uh, cutting, perforating, trimming. So I, I think it's um, related to edges that are exposed that might be, you know, chipped, um, I guess if the warranty, I think that's the, what the question. Well, I, think, I, think, I think when you do cut on site a panel and you have a humid or wet climate, you expect to be some um, absorption of humidity. And it's a good question, but we, we have a product when it goes out to market and to the real world like I mentioned, the surface gets a little humidity, but it dries off. The edges will absorb a little bit of humidity, but it dries off. But it does not alter warp the material, the board itself. There is no mechanical warping, if that's the fear and the, you know, the, the real issue behind the question. I hope that answers the uh, question. Um. Well, we've, we're getting a lot of questions, actually. <laughs> no, <right. laughs> um, 
does the cost also is a does the cost also add up in terms of maintenance how often do you need to repaint the panels uh panels are not painted panels when they leave the factory they are color through they're pigmented throughout the whole material it's like cement imagine cement and you color you apply a pigment through the whole slab of the cement right so as the cement wears out if you've applied the appropriate amount of pigment you will see the the same color throughout the slab in our product line it's the same concept we have a color through tone so 50 year lifespan it ages it wears there's some dusting a little bit over time uh, but you really shouldn't have any maintenance the only maintenance that i see is not maintenance it's actually um, mishandling on the job site basically putting in the windows uh, after you put in your fiber cement then what you have done is you've have sticky glue, glue uh, gloves uh, with, with um, uh, gl glue, three mm glue on your fiber cement. Then they call us up and say, how do we clean it? Then we say, well, you guys have to just buy some paper sand and sand it down. So that, that does get pretty simple, but it would be a shame uh, to ignore the recommendations and say fiber cement and an uh, envelope should be the last thing you install on a building. So you don't have any of these uh, silly mistakes. But really, uh, if it's very, very dusty, you just spray some water after a few years. You know, it's as simple as it gets. Um, Mariam, I'll, I'll take this one. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, we have here from Nonito Gala, and probably with Arvin Patawaran, most likely the um, question is almost the same. Uh, they're from the Philippines for, for sure. Is this <laughs> application in the tropical countries? And um, I would like to ask if this material can withstand prolonged exposure to rain if used as a facade material. Uh, good questions. Yes, the extreme tropical weather conditions, heat, humidity, rain are perfect uh, uses of our mineral panels. Beautiful. This is a beautiful climate to test how our panels age versus all the other metallic, you know, HPL synthetics. This is an excellent case to, to point out. And we have the Hong Kong Museum and other buildings in Vietnam and Malaysia. So we can show you buildings that have been standing for a few years now. And you can, you can I'd be happy to share those pictures with you. Great. Um, before we go into more technical questions, guys, I just want uh, Khalil to uh, talk a bit about their agent in the Middle East. Khalil, so we've got some questions about uh, how do we contact the company in Dubai and who's in the Middle yes, East. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have uh, the luck of working with Obras International that have over 10 years experience doing facade, ventilated facade and have worked with Equitone for over eight years. And they're based in Dubai in Business Bay and uh, Yara's uh, an architect working with Obras and she's on this call and we'll be happy. Uh, Yara will share her contact details as well. Uh, Khalil, I'm just gonna ask you please to type in your uh, contact details and Obras contact details into the chat box. So all of the attendees could copy that and, and use it. Okay. Thank you. Sure, my pleasure. Okay. Um, shall I continue with the questions? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, is installing external light on the facade between layers in the cavity, how and where is it placed? Sorry, I was typing. And where is that place? No. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries at all. So I think the question is about external lighting and how it would be installed uh, on the facade. Okay, so imagine you have a vacuum, uh, uh, not a vacuum, there's an air pocket between your wall and the uh, fiber cement panel, which is 8 mm. You, you at least have 20 millimeters, two centimeters of cavity. 
which means you can you can you can um, install your lighting fixtures in that cavity. If you need to increase the cavity, you can also increase it. Uh, it will only it will only mean you have to increase and make a uh, way for larger brackets, and it may raise the cost slightly of that section where you're actually working with lighting. But uh, I think most LED lighting lights today that I've seen they they can fit quite easily in it in a two to two and a half centimeter uh, air pocket, so. Okay. Um, any, uh, we have a question from Ahab, any existence in Egypt? I think he means if you have any agents in Egypt. We have uh, some wonderful people. One of them, um, the Has Group is finishing the big, big museum in Cairo that are working with us on a few towers that were designed by US architect out of Boston called the Aeon Towers. And uh, we're, this year has been the first year we've been working with Egypt. So we've been fortunate to meet some very professional uh, fabricators and uh, installers there. If anyone has any interest in contacting them, please contact me. I, I've shared my emails twice on this chat. so please feel free to contact me. All right, thank All you. Right. There's a question here from um, Ronnie Castillo. Can fiber cement board be bended or curved? Or like, can it sim simulate the design flexibility of GRC or GFRC? Uh, good question. We are, not competitive. we are not competing with GRC. We are two different worlds. We are panels that are 8 mm that can if you have a radius of more than 10 square meters in the facade of a building, you can actually nicely simulate a curved wall. So yes, we can work with curves uh, without a lot of cutting if you have a radius of at least 10, 10 meters. If you have small radius, then you will definitely have to do some cutting like I showed earlier in that example of that uh, museum, uh, sorry, the zoo in Sydney. But you can marry you can marry fiber cement and GRC. I tell this to contractors in the Middle East because GRC is quite readily available. And there are things that you can do with GRC that are very nice and make a building design really sharp. But on the other hand, you can mix fiber cement and other materials on the same facade. And you can you can reach your objectives if your objective is to have different volumes and 3D volume with GRC, but then you have another section where you want to have a lightweight material and have cutouts and do some lighting and et cetera, and reduce your overall cost of the building because the foundations are going to be lighter. So yeah, you can do some value engineering from the structural side and you can cohabitate. I mean, we're not here to take, Equitone is a very niche product. No, we, we really sell to the five to 8%, maximum 10% of the market. We're not a really mass, mass volume product, but we are really a premium brand for owners and architects that are looking for really the edge in design. That is not going to cost a lot of money. Remember, it's not going to cost you a lot of money to add fiber cement equitone to your facade versus other alternatives like GRC. Uh, Khalil, I have a question myself. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a bit about the acoustical properties um, of fiber cement, whether it's internal or external? Um, it's a good point. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I do know that, for example, um, a few auditoriums are using internally uh, Equitone as an acoustic panel on the walls. Number one, they don't have to be repainting the walls. And so there's an, an issue of maintenance and a savings of maintenance. And number two, you're getting a lot of noise reduction on the walls. And the ceiling panels, you can also use them based on what you are trying to achieve in terms of reduction in decibels. But there are definitely products for the ceiling for acoustic reduction that are a lot more performing. But you definitely gain also an external application advantage with fiber cement because the fibers in the cement act like a big... Uh, noise absorption uh, materials. So that is definitely a nice application for people. I, I apologize, but I will make sure in our send out after this um, uh, webinar that I do 
provide some some more specifics on the decibels that we are able to help with uh, so that we can make sure that documentation is available to anyone who may want to pursue that discussion. Um, another interesting question is, is there a relationship between fiber cement and the green cement? And the? Green cement. Green cement. Yeah. Well, um, if I understand green cement, does that mean that cement that have a low carbon footprint is, can the person who requested, who, who put the question, can they answer to that? If they mean by low carbon footprint, so I'm understanding them properly. Um, if, I believe it was in Tassar. If you can clarify your question in the chat box, Tassar, please. Intisar al hilo, I think. I will. I will answer um, in, because I'm thinking that's probably where they're coming from. Um, gray cement today is, has a high fi carbon footprint, and our company is fighting that that issue. And there are a lot of innovative approaches that have been coming out, and they are not yet commercially widely available. But I do foresee in the next five to ten years there will be a lot more greener cement. That's only going to make our materials a lot more appealing from a sustainability perspective. So anyone who, if I increase, if I reduce my carbon footprint by mixing my cement, green cement, I'm basically going to help the environment and help my architect design greener buildings. Uh, I hope that was the intent of the question and the term green. Okay. I, I guess the questions are increasing <laughs> as you go through the conversation, Khalil. So, um, all right. So we also have questions about, oh, so the, the person um, clarified that green cement is zero cement, has zero cement, I guess. Okay. No, that is not our world yet. Uh, we I wish we had a material that had zero cement, but we still need a bonding agent that's mineral, that is very durable, that is very stable. And today, cement, as engineered as it is, is the best material we have available on the market to make this a commercially viable product. But I do believe that this is going to come very closely and very fast because the pollution footprint of cement factories is extremely high. And all of the big companies, producers are, in, are looking to in, innovate. And I think there's going to be some strong innovation coming out very soon. So I do hope, I do hope that uh, we do have a greener equitone in the next few years. The way we are fighting back is reducing the uh, raw material content. So instead of having uh, virgin materials in our input, in our mix, we are trying to increase the reuse of recycled content today. All right, we have here. Um, <laughs> you're, you're getting a lot of questions. <laughs> getting a lot of questions tonight. Um, okay, from Muhammad um, Abdel Mahoud, is the system have a certificate from Abu Dhabi Civil Defense? So oh, yes, yes, we we've we've had the fortune of navigating that process for the last mm -hmm. few years. With our local partner, yeah, we have the UAE certification process. And mm -hmm. how about KSA? Um, is your materials available in KSA? Do you have an agent there? KSA, KSA is a market for us. It's, I think, an emerging market. And um, we do have uh, presence. Our distributor in UAE has uh, a long history working in KSA as well. And we do have some very interesting projects um, we're working on in the design side right now in KSA. Yes. All right. If you do, you. Uh, I want to ask more questions. If you have further questions to Khalil, just email Khalil to Khalil at Suruti at edtexgrupo.com or um, Yara at obrasinternational.com, intl.com. That's in the chat box. So, yes, Maria. All right. So, I'll. I mean, uh, there's, okay, so there's one interesting question uh, from Ali. Uh, thank you for the beautiful presentation. I have one question. What is the best software for designing, I guess, 
the ecotone facade architecture since it's relevant to this presentation? Yeah. Well, Ali, uh, the way we work today is when you, the architect, provides us with a DWG file, is we can, we can share with you um, one, a service where we can help you design your layout, or two, we can actually assist you with the software package we have uh, that's under development that allows architects to look at wastages real time as they're doing their design on, on mm -hmm. AutoCAD or... So the other tool I would recommend people start working with is Revit. I'm sure most of you have worked or seen it. Revit, if you create your modules and download them from our website, the BIM objects, you can easily see the facade and you can easily calculate your wastages and it's a nice visual uh, tool for optimizing your layout. So we can work with you and if you have any specific uh, project, if you need me to assist you or look at any of the um, value engineering, just uh, shoot me an email. Okay, I think this is all dependent on if you can handle like an additional six more questions, maybe. Yeah, or you prefer to. then, okay. I'm so I'm, as as I'm not holding you guys from your dinner. Oh, no, no, it's totally <laughs> fine. I'm just worried about you since you had the whole presentation and then a whole bunch of questions. No, okay, so part. The interactive part is the funnest part. I felt really bored repeating those slides. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this one was a, a really nice question. What is the maximum wind velocity that can sustain can that can be sustained by the equitone cladding panel, and what is the highest building that you utilize the equitone cladding? Okay, a good question. Um, to memory, the last discussion I had about a very high building in Kuwait, we were looking at over 120 kilometers per hour wind gusts. Now, how do we address high winds? We address high winds by adding profiles. So for sections of 0 0.60 meters, instead of laying a profile every 0 0.60 meters, we would lay it every 0 0.40, every 0 0.30. So we would do some calculations with, with, the wind, um, with the wind model. And then we would basically recommend uh, the architect or the engineer and say, you would have to have a profile every X centimeters or half a meter, et cetera. So uh, the buildings that we have installed over a hundred meters, some of them are in Asia, some of them are in, in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. So people are getting more comfortable with fiber cement and heights because it's just a design. It's a design thing going from glass and ACL to fiber cement. So the same as ACL, huh? you have glass and ACL at very high, you know, ex extremely high levels, so. Christian, you wanna there, take those? Yeah, there's a lot of question here pertaining to the fire resistivity of the material. Um, mm -hmm. And then Good also, question. It's a bit, yeah. Yeah, and it's also big, the, the fire rating and its classification and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is a big, big uh, bonus for us because uh, whenever there's a fire, people call us and ask about fiber cement because the ACL and HPLs are, uh, have a lower fire resistance. We're, we're A2, DS0, so very important. And um, yeah, this is a good question, guys, uh, ladies as well. When you're designing high rises, Fiber cement is one of the best materials, safest materials to put, even in partitions internally. So keep that in mind, please. When you have heights internally as well. You don't have smoke. You don't have a lot of the issues you have with other materials. Mario, I'm keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I see an interesting question here. This is a good one. Sami Haddad, what is the difference between fiber cement and UHPC? So I, I imagine it's ultra high U, UHPL or PC composites. Composites have resins. And resins usually today, water-based resins are not there, to my knowledge, that are make a panel resistant strong enough. And you still have a lot of these chemicals. So mm, I would always say the biggest 
differences. One is the mineral world. We are in the mineral world, 100% mineral, which means nature. We are a natural element. Water, minerals, cement is a natural element. UHBC has manufactured components, chemicals. That's the two worlds where we're, we're opposite a little bit. So keep that in mind when you're looking at safety. Keep that in mind when you're looking at also how things age. Usually these other materials, as much as they would love to say, they will not last 50 years like ours. No, no, no way. Mm -hmm. All right, from Alan Donke, is your product has any weaknesses in characteristics to avoid when using it? Uh, yes, it does. I mean, uh, when you're using it, uh, cutting it, it's dusty. So you have to wear, be very careful. We, we always ask people to make sure that they protect themselves from the dust. Um, it's actually thin, which means 8 mm, which means it's light. That means people can mishandle it sometimes on a job site and it will break mm. if they're not careful uh, in the sense of it's not a stone, it's not, it's not a sheet of metal. Mm. So uh, also because of the texture and the aesthetic aspect, it will be damaged if it's mishandled. So the aesthetic aspect of Equitone is very important to architects. So the texture and the finish on the surface uh, has to be handled with care. So that is a weakness, yes. You want it to look nice, you have to protect its texture and you have to handle it with care. You can't throw it around. And uh, I would say those are the, probably the two or three weaknesses, yeah. Right, there's, a, there's an interesting question here from Lord Will Flores from Dubai. Can you tell us if um, Egitone Fiber Cement has antibacterial properties if you want to use it for interior design? Uh, yes, very good point. It does, and we have some certifications for that. So please okay. download those from our website. Very important. Molding, fungus, antimicrobial. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the advantage compared to ACP, aluminum composite pa panels? Um, number one, I would say is the aesthetics. So if you look at uh, Equitone on the table and you have aluminum on the table, it's completely two different worlds. Number two, fire resistance. Our product is extremely fire resistant. Number three, aging and performance. Number four, design flexibility. If you want to perforate or cut through materials that are ACL, you don't have the color through aspect. We have 8 mm, 10 mm, 12 mm. So these are some of the technical and aesthetic aspects that you don't find in ACL. They're two different worlds, but you see them all over the building, ACL everywhere, all over the world. And there are different uh, design uh, reasons for ACL, but you will see more and more people now find Equitone that look like an ACP panel, but we perform so much better when it comes to safety and aging. So we do have a, a family of Equitone called Natura, which is a very smooth metallic looking panel. And a lot of architects are, are prescribing it because it's, it, it looks metallic, but yet it behaves completely differently. All right, we have here a um, question from Alvic Doctolero. I've seen fiber cement suppliers not warrant the exposed edges. Is this a standard regulation among the manufacturers? And then he, I think he clarified it by saying- By cut edges are usually yeah. instructed to be covered with trims or they don't warranty them. No, we don't. We don't, our brand does not instruct to cover with trims, the edges. We don't have that. You have open, uh, open uh, joints. We don't really have to trim. Uh, trimming is aesthetic. You can do a bar of aluminum colored if you want for facades. You can you can add trims as an aesthetic, but not as a technical requirement. I don't know uh, where you have seen it, but we really don't have any instructions on trimming um, panels on the edges with any other materials. Not at all. 
All right, let's take like the last one question, Mariam, and then yeah. Okay. Um, how could you make fiber cement much more livable, interactive material in architectural facade design? I mean that dynamic breathing material is not just a fixed one. Is this a trick question? Uh, maybe. <laughs> breathing material, not just a fixed one. Um, Interactive, our material, how is it interactive? It's interactive because of the mechanical properties of the minerals, right? So um, when it rains, you'll see different tones on the material. And then throughout the day, it will dry out. So it will look like it's a different material, different times of the day, okay? Um, to me, that's like, a living material. It changes color, it changes tone. Performance-wise, it's stable in terms of mechanical performance. In terms of dynamic materials, um, we don't have any smart properties in fiber cement. Not yet, and not that I have heard of. Um, perhaps one day we will have fibers that react to temperature and heat differently that allow you to shape themselves or look like they're shaping themselves on the surface differently. That perhaps may be an engineering feature that architects may find attractive, I don't know. But I have not seen any panel materials today on the market that offer any of these dynamic properties, really. And it's a good question because um, we are all bored of static. We don't want static. A static is old, it's boring. We want things that look like they're changing all the time. And I'm sure some, someone out there is thinking of that and someone will probably in, invent something uh, soon because I believe the demand is there. So that is a good question, but I don't have the product for you yet. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, I think, Mariam? Uh, there's, we're going to take this one last question and then that's it for the Q&A session, which you've been very helpful with, Khalil. Honestly, your patience my, my, is fantastic. My, my pleasure. It's my duty to uh, inform. This is a uh, webinar for making sure word gets out and people can get curious about new materials and we're here to help with that. Okay. Uh, why is that titanium sheeting uh, also considered to be used as for facade aesthetic material. What I've seen titanium. Uh, it's expensive, but I've seen it in the Kuwait city. They have the beautiful opera house. Is that one of the recent uh, iconic buildings that I had the pleasure of seeing in Kuwait last year? Titanium is a metal that performs and behaves is very stable in the with the elements. So that, that's, I think, one of the reasons why it's used uh, outdoors, but it's ex very expensive. It's a very stable uh, material that ages very well. And you can you can make a lot of shapes and, and geometries with it. So, but it is very, very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's very expensive. I can't tell you it's three, yeah. I've seen the numbers, it's extremely expensive. So it was a beautiful job done in Kuwait. I don't know if you've seen or referring to any other buildings. Um, are you talking about the Ahmed Al Jabr uh, Center? No. It's the music hall, right, in Kuwait? The beautiful. Yeah. Mm. SSH did the design, I think. Yeah, SSH. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we've answered all the open questions Before successfully. Sure. Just, yeah, just if we can uh, send a reminder to everyone who is uh, still stayed with us and wondering how mm -hmm. to join and become a member with the AIA, what is it that they should do? Um, is visit our website, AIA Middle East .org, and you'll find all the information there. All right, and, uh, and you have and I think questions? the email, the email as well. Yes. I'll I'll repost the email for whoever missed it. Uh, so you can also check it out. And also you'll see the emails of Khalil and Yara uh, to contact them. Should you have additional questions, uh, they can help you out with. And also yes. we are, 
we are on YouTube, so this webinar session will be um, reposted um, to our YouTube channel. The link is below, or you can search AIA Middle East. Yes, Khalil. Thank you for everyone for your feedback and for your participation. I want to emphasize a very important point, please. Uh, dear architects, designers, influencers, we live in very hot climates. The easiest way to reduce the energy bill of a building is to give it a second skin and give it a ventilated facade. It is the most inexpensive, environmentally responsible way to do something good for the planet. Whether it's Equitone or another material, uh, always try to convince the owner and the contractor not to resist the concept of the envelope because it is a tried and tested technique and it is very affordable very affordable please 